What's up guys? So it's asked to do a list for some of my favorite smartphones. Most of these are older flagship phones from 2018 uh, that you can buy in 2022 here. And I've used all these phones and I realized that a lot of these phones on the list are still pretty popular because of they're so much cheaper overseas actually. So they're just much more affordable. Uh, for people that aren't in the western marketplace uh, so one of the first phones that i would highly recommend i think this would be my my favorite phone on the list is the iphone 10s this is an excellent device i absolutely love using this device this is actually my favorite uh you know budget i guess iphone or older flagship phone as, if, as far as if you want an iPhone, it just still looks really beautiful. Uh, it's very cheap, around 250 bucks here in the States. And uh, yeah, so it's just really awesome. It's IP68 dust and water resistant. It does have a somewhat of a compact 5.8 inch uh, OLED retina display on here. It's HDR10 and it is a 1080p plus display, 458 for the PPI. So overall, it's a still a very high quality uh, panel here very sharp you can watch your content in 1080p and it looks really good uh, so this phone of course it's going to be running the latest version of ios it actually will get the ios 16 update it honestly should get a few more years of updates honestly maybe like either three or four uh, it does have the apple a12 chip and then you also have um, on here no SD card support of course and then 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM so basically the iPhone 10s can still pretty much play any game at high settings I do have a gaming test uh, on the channel just type it in the search box and um, you will be pretty amazed at the performance on this phone especially um, I showed you guys the Geekbench scores as well too uh, with that and you'll see that it's still a very fast chip Apple does make some really great uh, chips so this phone does have stereo speakers, very loud, really good bass quality. Uh, NFC is on here, of course, with Apple Pay. Face ID still very fast on here. And um, this phone has still pretty good cameras. It's a dual camera setup, 12 megapixel standard, 12 megapixel telephoto, 2x optical zoom. So the only thing about this phone is that most people prefer an ultra wide. This doesn't have it. It has the, you know, the optical zoom, but you could actually like that. I think it's beneficial as well too. Uh, so it's 4K 60 for video and then 7 megapixel selfie cam. It shoots in 1080p 60. Images look really good on here. Uh, good dynamic range, pretty good color. Um, I think at this price point, there's no complaint. And also the video is just really solid on this phone too. It still looks are really good so overall I think the cameras are still have aged really well uh, to me and battery life also is pretty good I'm able to squeeze pretty much almost about a uh, six hours of screen on time so it's got a 2658 milliamp battery it depends on your battery health since most of these phones are going to be in the used refurbished marketplace um, but typically mine is like I think 86 or something like that and I'm able to get almost six hours, so I think that's pretty good. 15 watt charging, and you have wireless charging as well, too. So I would consider the iPhone XS. It is an excellent buy still. Next is going to be the Galaxy S9 Plus. So this is a very cheap phone as well, too, around the $200 price point. Uh, this phone actually just got its last security patch as well, too. It's still a very much usable phone, um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that it's still a very awesome phone even if you want to use it as a backup phone or whatever it's got an aluminum frame glass back it's ip68 dust and water resistant it's got a 6.2 inch super amoled display it's hdr10 at 1440p and then it's 529 for the ppi what i like about this s9 series is that there is no punch hole on the display so that's definitely beneficial for you know the anti-notch punch hole people and uh, it's a very beautiful display as far as colors and as far as the resolution being able to watch content in 2k resolution and uh, it's just a joy to look at uh, the last major os update was android 10 on this phone now this phone does have rom ports and stuff like that so if you do want to go ahead and root it and port a rom on here uh, you definitely can do that uh, you do have the snapdragon 845 and the adreno 630 on here as well too and then you also have micro sd card support 64 gigs of internal storage and six or four gigs of ram uh, basically the phone is still very much powerful and it still will outdo uh, some of these mid-range chips as far as the geekbench and in 2.2 scores go 
Now, this phone does a pretty good job with gaming. It won't be able to max games out. If you're really trying to game on an older flagship, I would go 855 chip and up. And um, yeah, but this still does an excellent job. I did a gaming test on this one too. You can play Fortnite, PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, all at pretty good settings. And I think you'll be fine if you're a casual gamer. Uh, you also have really good stereo speakers on here. The headphone jack is still on this phone. And then you also have NFC, an iris scanner. Uh, you also have your physical fingerprint scanner on the back. This phone actually has a heart rate um, thing on here as well too. And uh, so it, it's really specced out as far as feature wise. And you still have the Samsung desktop support experience uh, on this guy as well too. Um, so the really kind of odd thing about this phone is that it's actually still got a really good camera to me this phone and the the note 9 which we're going to talk about these phones still have oddly really great cameras at least to me uh, it's got a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel telephoto it's 2x optical zoom now of course i'm not saying that it's just as good as these newer phones but i'm just saying for an older flagship phone i really like the color and the dynamic range and Everything about the cameras, I think, is still pretty solid. Uh, it shoots in 4K 60 and then 1440p for the selfie camera. And um, you also have an 8 megapixel, you know, selfie cam. Then you have that dedicated iris scanner up there as well, too. And, um, yeah, so the image quality, I still think, looks pretty good, especially if you're in good lighting. It's still a very solid device to consider. Um, so this phone does have a 3,500 milliamp battery with wireless charging and 15 watt uh, wired charging uh, basically this phone it can get up to around uh, six hours of screen on time uh, you typically I can get close to that now one thing about this phone is it can get a little bit hot sometimes now most people don't notice because you might have a case on it but this phone definitely it kind of heats up just a little bit uh, especially when you're gaming a lot but usually um, it stays you know somewhat warm but yeah, that's one thing I definitely notice about this phone, but in general, it's still a really good buy. Next is the Galaxy Note 9, which I still prefer this phone over like the budget Motorola um, stylus phones. I just think the stylus is still more high quality. It's still Bluetooth, and you know, it's a Bluetooth stylus and it just feels more high quality as far as for digital artwork and navigating. I think it's still better than the stylus um, phone. So. This phone is also very cheap, that's why I said as well too. So if you're really in a digital artwork and you want a stylus, I would really consider this phone just because it's super cheap and it's just higher quality. Now, the Note 9 does have really good ROM community as well too. So this phone recently got a security patch. Um, I think it was May, but it will um, eventually stop getting security patches probably next year. Um, so yeah, so definitely keep that in mind. You do have an aluminum frame, a glass back on here. It is IP68 dust and water resistant. Uh, the, the design still looks fine. A lot of people, a lot of you guys are saying it does look a little bit dated. Um, yeah, it does. But like I said, most people, they usually keep a case on their phone. Um, so you do have a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display, HDR10. I absolutely love the boxy screen on here, especially not having any type of notch or punch hole. This one is also a 1440p display and it's 516 for the PPI. And overall, it's still a really beautiful uh, display to look at. It's actually one of my favorite uh, displays still. Uh, so this phone does have the Snapdragon 845, Adreno 630. Uh, the last major OS update was Android 10, One UI 2.5. And then you have micro SD card support, 128 gigs of internal storage, 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. And uh, performance wise, it's just like the S9 Plus. It's able to, it's still very speedy as far as, you know, navigating, web browsing, social media, and also gaming. It can't max games out, but it does play games at pretty good settings. And like I said, if you compare those Geekbench scores to, you know, some mid range phones, it can still outdo those phones. Um, so this phone does have stereo speakers as well, too, which sound really good. Very good bass. Headphone jack is on board. Of course, again, built in stylus, NFC. The iris scanner is on board, physical fingerprint scanner on the back, very fast. Samsung desktop support experience is on here. And it still has a very similar camera to the um, S9 Plus. It's a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel telephoto. Uh, it takes pretty much the same photos. It shoots in 4K 60, 1440p video on the front. And then you also have an 8 megapixel selfie cam with a 2 megapixel iris scanner up there as well too. 
So like I said, uh, image quality, I still think the, the Note 9 still takes some very good shots as far as dynamic range, detail. Um, I think anybody paying, you know, 200 bucks for his phone will be satisfied with that. Battery life is actually pretty good on the Note 9. I've never had this phone die on me uh, in a day. Uh, yes, it's a phone that you have to charge at the end of the day, but definitely you can get through your day pretty far. You also have wireless charging on board too. So the Note 9 is definitely a phone that I would consider. Uh, next, I do want to talk about the LG V40. This was also a phone that came out in 2018. This is just a solid, solid phone. I recently made a video about this phone and uh, still going strong in uh, 2022. And a lot of people like to use these older LG phones as MP3 players since these phones have the quad DAC on them. And um, a lot of people I see using these phones as secondary phones as well too. So definitely keep that in mind with these older flagships is that you can really get these things for so much cheaper and use them uh, for just a ton of stuff as far as music playing, as far as storage, or just the backup phone in general. Uh, this phone has still a pretty decent design. It's aluminum frame, glass back, IP68 dust and water resistant. A really beautiful P OLED display is HDR10 at 6.4 inches. It is 1440p as well too, 537 for the PPI. Uh, the last update was Android 10 for this phone. It does have the Snapdragon 845 and Adreno 630 on board. And just like all of the other phones on this list, uh, this phone does a pretty good job with performance. You also have micro SD card support, 64 gigs of internal storage, and 6 gigs of RAM. Like I said, they highlight with the V40 that quad DAC. Uh, so if you're into high quality audio listening, uh, you'll definitely appreciate that. Uh, the speakers on the V40 do sound pretty good as well too. You also have NFC, physical fingerprint scanner on the back. I think the cameras are pretty good as well too, and I don't think LG gets enough credit for having you know that triple camera set up in 2018. So it's got 12 megapixel standard, 12 megapixel telephoto, and you also have a 16 megapixel ultra wide. Has 4K 60 on the back and then 1080p on the front, and then you have an 8 megapixel standard camera, and then a 5 megapixel wide lens on the V40 as well too. So if you take group selfie shots and stuff like that. Uh, you will definitely like that. I really do like the pictures on the V40. Good detail, good color, very natural color. And like I said, as you can see, like these phones that came out in 2018, they had dual cameras, but the V40 had a triple camera set up. Uh, so battery life on here is still somewhat decent. You can get around six hours of screen on time on this phone as well too, surprisingly, uh, considering that it's a 3,300 milliamp battery. You do have 18 watt charging and wireless charging. So overall, the V40 is still a great buy to consider. Last on the list is the Pixel 3, which you can pick up again for dirt cheap. I still really like this phone. And what's crazy about this phone is it is actually upgradable to Android 12. So uh, even for a phone that came out in 2018, this phone actually still got the Android 12 update, uh, which is hilarious. And I actually think the camera, as far as steals, it's actually the best. Uh, on this list as well too so it's a very solid uh, device here it's got an aluminum frame on here and then you also have ip68 dust and water resistant it's a poled hdr 5.5 inch display so if you want something that's really compact i would definitely consider this 1080p 443 for the ppi like i said upgradable to android 12 that's still really great and then you also have Snapdragon 845, Adreno 630. Again, performance-wise on here, it's going to be pretty good. And you get the stock vanilla experience. So everything feels really fast on this phone. Of course, uh, you have no SD card support, 64 gigs of internal storage, 4 gigs of RAM. The stereo speakers are actually really high quality on uh, this guy as well, too. Very loud, good bass. Uh, you have NFC on board with a physical fingerprint scanner on the back. Like I said, I think this phone takes the best steals on the list. It's a 12.2 megapixel lens, shoots in 4K 60, and then you also have a dual camera setup up front to 8 megapixel standard, and then an 8 megapixel ultra wide, shoots in 1080p 30, and you just get some great shots on this phone. Great detail, great color, um, the dynamic range is awesome. Uh, it just takes some extremely solid and well uh, shots on here. Uh, so this phone does have a 2915 milliamp battery, 18 watt charging with wireless charging. Typically this phone 
could get me almost around six hours of screen on time the battery life isn't terrible but it's definitely not the best on the list but considering that you get android 12 and you get excellent camera um i definitely think it's worth considering so be sure to let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you guys in the next one